digital learning as a whole was something I thought was this sort of magical box. And I thought for most of my courses, at least, it wouldn't be much of a problem. Um, but it turned out to be a very interesting set of experience. When we're dealing with students on a digital platform and one asks questions such as, should I ask students to have their video on? Right? Now that immediately, initially, my answer was yes, why not? But then one has to think without, about things like, wait, some students may be in environments, they may not want to show their backgrounds. Maybe their entire family lives in one or two rooms. Maybe there's a lot of noise. Uh, so that involves me creating opportunities for students to interact with the class in different ways, rather than just the usual, you look at me at my face and answer a question, right? Maybe they can write in the chat box, maybe they can record their replies at other times and bring it forth. So uh, this kind of dispersed, decentralized learning uh, has actually underscored a lot of different things and it's been a lot of learning for me as well. I can certainly say one thing I'm a big fan of is recording lectures now. Uh, in fact, I'm going to push for all re lectures to be recorded forever because that way at least, it, first of all, it helps me to go look back at it and to see, hold on, I could have taught this better. I could have done this other thing better. It also allows students to go back before their exams, which is when they all study, we all know this, um, to go back over the actual lectures and not what they thought they heard, right? And then students can come back to me and say, hey, you said this, did you mean A or did you mean B? And having that recording has been incredibly useful. Not too long ago, uh, what I decided to do was to intentionally make provocative statements to get students arguing, right? And we had a very interesting discussion, for example, about uh, uh, universal basic income and negative income tax, and sort of because we were talking about the gig economy and something that's called coast work, um, and trying to understand how uh, people might be at work without even knowing who their employers are and things like that, and not having direct connections and what that means for the world economy. And immediately, obviously, because of the way I phrased it on purpose, an argument started up. Um, the reason I'm telling the story is because my, my initial idea was that I'm going to start an argument and then I'm going to have to mute everyone. And then I'm going to ask people to come on the chat one by one to make those arguments. What I immediately found completely surprising is that how good students were at not talking over each other because I immediately expected a cacophony and I, I was like, okay, calm down. And I was ready to do that. And there is a surprising degree of self-organization that occurs because even without me telling them that, what happened is students posted on the chat in a particular order and then talked over each other in that order automatically without necessarily me guiding them into anything. So I think there's a lot of automatic organization that's going to happen on the part of the students as well. And I've seen this happen multiple times. Once or twice, I've just told them what to do, but a lot of the time it's the students that, that have been helping me. So um, that, that, that's sort of my generic anecdote from my experiences in teaching.